Here's how I built my dream pressure washer setup. If you ride dirt bikes, then you're going to be spending time cleaning dirt off your dirt bike a lot of time. I've been riding motorcycles for years and one of the most frequent tasks after completing a ride is cleaning your bike. I've always dreamed of having a setup that makes this whole process easier. The standard process of untangling and connecting hoses wasn't much fun. We've all experienced noticing that one dirty spot right after you put all the equipment away. Although this new setup isn't perfect, so far it's proving to be much easier. When we started construction on our new home, I made sure to plan ahead and have a dedicated water spigot and electrical outlet installed in the garage. The plumber ran a dedicated hot water line to this access point and I have an electrical outlet right next to it. I knew I wanted to have a small electric pressure washer and to mount it on the wall. However, I didn't have a specific model in mind. After a little bit of research on YouTube, I found a relatively inexpensive compact electric pressure washer that appeared to have some pretty good reviews from the auto detailing industry. I figured if it was good enough to wash cars, it would likely be good enough for dirt bikes. I landed on the Active 2.0 pressure washer. I will post links to all the products included in this build as well as a breakdown of the total cost in the description below. At $349, it was in the same price range as some of the higher end pressure washers found at Home Depot. Most pressure washers advertise their PSI ratings. However, in my research, I learned about another important stat, GPM or gallons per minute. Many pressure washers will boast high PSI ratings. However, they're able to achieve that by only allowing a small amount of water through. You need decent pressure and quantity of water for a good wash. The Active 2.0 includes a modest 1800 PSI. However, it also produces over two GPM. This is almost double what most electric pressure washers will output. With this knowledge, I went ahead and made my purchase. The next crucial component to my ideal pressure washer setup was going to be a wall mounted reel, preferably a retractable reel. Now, I will admit this is where things started to get a little more custom and there are likely many other options out there that are much easier. I actually ended up converting a Harbor Freight air compressor reel into a pressure washer reel. I did this because I had actually already purchased a 50 foot non kink pressure washer hose and I wanted to see if I could make it work. As simple as the idea sounds, it actually starts to get complicated when you realize that you'll actually need three different hoses. One from the wall to the pressure washer, the second hose from the pressure washer to the reel, and the third hose being your main non-kink hose with the gun attached to the end. The first hose will be a standard garden hose and the other two hoses will need to be pressure washer hoses with higher PSI ratings. The fittings on the garden hose and pressure washer hoses are different. To complicate things further, if you do what I did and convert an air hose reel into a pressure washer hose reel, then you'll need to buy some adapters to reduce the thread size on the pressure washer hoses to utilize the 90 degree swivel joint. With the right parts and tools, the job is actually fairly simple. In addition to the pressure washer unit and hoses, I went ahead and purchased a few other items to make the whole build that much better. I got this small pack of quick disconnect adapters from Amazon and installed them in a few locations. This allows for quick disconnect for different gun attachments. I also purchased a pro foam cannon and swivel washer gun. The swivel attachment on the gun makes maneuvering easy and the hose doesn't get tangled. With all equipment ready, it was time to get started. The first step was mounting the pressure washer on the wall. I had a few pieces of scrap wood and bought these 90 degree shelf brackets from Home Depot. I found a spot on the wall that I liked and got to work. Once the pressure washer was mounted, I started connecting the hoses to get a feel for where everything would fit best. I made sure to use thread tape on all the joints to ensure a good connection. Also, I made sure to use a stud finder when mounting the shelf and more importantly, the retractable reel to the wall to make sure I had a solid mount. In order to convert the Harbor Freight reel, I had to unwind the included air compressor hose. I guess it's possible to still use this hose as it is rated for higher pressure, but they are smaller diameter and I'm not sure if it would supply enough water. Again, I was also excited to try the non-kink hose that I bought. After unwinding the old hose, I had to modify the reel slightly to fit the end of the pressure washer hose through. Removing the reel, I secured the mounting arm to the wall and then attached the reel back on. I installed the three foot pressure hose to the reel and then connected the 50 foot hose as well. Once the reel was installed, I gave it a few test runs to make sure everything was working properly. Now it was time to install the gun and start washing. I found lots of good reviews of this McKillen's swivel gun, so I purchased one and so far it seems to be pretty awesome. I also bought this MJJC Pro Foam Cannon. The pressure washer actually comes with a small foam cannon. However, based on what others have said, they usually don't produce as thick of foam. I unboxed the new foam cannon and added some car wash soap. With everything connected, it was time for my first test run. I turned the water on and switched the pressure washer to on. Good news, no leaks. 
I had to snug a couple of the joints a little tighter, but everything held together. I grabbed the gun and started washing. I didn't have any experience with an electric pressure washer, only the gas-powered ones that I've used for years. It immediately produced great pressure and I was happy with the spray. One thing I didn't realize is that the electric pressure washer only turns on when it needs to produce pressure. If you have the unit on but are not using the gun, then it remains quiet. It's only when you squeeze the trigger and start spraying that the pump is then required to catch up and pressurize the line. I tested out my foam cannon and was pretty happy with the amount of foam I was able to get. I just purchased some generic foam soap from O'Reilly's down the road. I will likely test out a few different types of foam cannon soap and degreasers in the future. My first test run was successful and I was able to wash my dirt bike. The nicest part about the whole setup is when I was done, I simply retracted the hose, turned off the pressure washer, and shut off the water. For each use, all I need to do is turn the water on, flip the switch, and start washing. Here's a breakdown of all the parts I used to complete this project and the total cost. For about $750, I installed a pretty sweet pressure washer setup that will hopefully serve me for years in the future. Thanks for watching. If you like this type of garage content or off-road motorcycle content, check out our channel for more videos. Subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the action and stay tuned for more garage build projects. See you on the trails.